Okay. I'm intrigued. Badge crafted long ago at the workshop. As attests to one's prowess as a hunter of beasts. The workshop is gone, and no group recognizes the meaningless badge except the messengers in the bath, who understand its profuted, or profundity. Certain things can only be entrusted with a hunter in possession of this badge, or so they believe. So, I unlocked more stuff from the old, uh... In the old, uh, messenger bath, which is cool. We'll have to go check those out after we fight the boss and die or don't die, I don't know which. We'll figure, we'll, uh, we'll come to that bridge when we come to it. Oh, this ladder is so long. <laughs> Getting up here takes forever. Take us so long. So long to get up here. Okay. So there's two of you guys looking at a dude next to a statue. <laughs> and I'm gonna abuse the shit out of, uh... Visceral attacks here, bucko. <laughs> like, no joke. That couldn't have worked any better for me. Like, legit it couldn't have. I got dang lucky on that one. So, th this is boss arena number two. Once I pass through that archway, you can, you can kind of even see the outline for it. And this is probably... I don't want to say this is one of the hardest boss fights for me, but I seem to struggle bust this one the most. Out of all the boss fights, this is the one that gets me the worst. Oh, hey, Father Gascoigne. What are you doing here in this cemetery? Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay. okay. I'm sure they, they deserve that, didn't they? They, uh, they needed this. They, they brought this upon themselves, didn't they? Nothing but, uh... Beasts all over the shop. Okay. You will be one of them. Sooner or later. <laughs> Interesting. But, I'm gonna get a close-up of your face, buddy. You're turning beast. Okay. I'm... Oh, that's... That's so not good. Oh my goodness. He's going to kick the shit out of me, isn't he? Yep, yep, he is. He's kicking the shit out of me. Thankfully, he's visceralable. Visceral attackable, I guess, would be the correct term. Ah! Oh, come on! No. Oh, shit. I'm trying too hard to get the visceral attack on him. Oh, what's that smell? The sweet blood. He, uh... Oh, it seems to me... It's enough to make a man sick. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah! No. So if you kill this guy fast enough, he actually doesn't get a phase three because he's got phase one, which is he's got his pistol and his uh ah. Okay, so here's phase three, and this is when he becomes like a problem and a half to fight, basically. Because he is super duper durable. And actually we're just going to cheese this if we can. And if we can we're just going to cheese this boss fight. Ah! And it looks like we're going to be able to. Because his, uh, his, our RNG is going really, really well here for us, basically. Yeah. Usually he doesn't get stuck on the wall there. So this boss fight is in t 
entirely, entirely so much tougher. Okay, let's uh let's click this bonfire here real real speedy like. So yeah, he was killing uh he was just killing random Yarnamites. Now bo now guys, boys and girls, this is the point where we have this sad conversation here. What I'm about to show you is basically the the long and the short of the little girl plot that I told you about earlier with the window that we weren't going to talk to. So she tells you, oh, my mom went out during the hunt and my dad followed her. Well, this is her, this is their mother. And Father Gascoigne is their father. So somewhere along the line, he started to go mad during the, the endless hunt. That's why he's, and he started to drink deep of the blood, becoming more beast-like. That's why when we see him at the beginning of the boss fight, he has fangs. And by the end, he's completely full transformation mode. So, and the guys he kills. So either, there's two explanations for this story. For the scenes that you come up on in this boss arena. The first one is the men that Papa Ga or that Father Gascoigne was killing in the boss arena when you show up are men that attacked his wife and threw her off of a balcony onto this roof, killing her. Or Papa Ga or Father Gascoigne killed his wife in a fit of beastly rage or uh, beastly rage or heat or something and ended up tossing his own wife off the edge either way it's very sad so basically through this gist I have killed both their parents and if I had talked to the little girl she asked me to find them if you find them and bring them back to the uh, area if um and so you get here, and you go through this boss fight, and then you find the jewel here. And you can take this jewel back to the little girls like, Hey, I found your mother. I'm so terribly sorry. And the little girl talking to you at the window then proceeds to head out into the endless night. Or into the, uh, the endless hunt night here. And so she takes the, the jewel we just picked up off for off the lady on the balcony over there. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, maybe it's over here. Yeah, the red jeweled brooch. A woman's bright red brooch engraved with the name Vi Viola. Perhaps the jewel is a gift from a hunter used to change into a drop of blood gem that fortifies any weapon. With the proper workshop tool, various weapons can be fortified. Okay, so you can... So if you take that back to... Or back to the little girl, you can give it to her. You go, hey, I found your mom. I'm so sorry. She heads out into the hunt, or she heads out into the night to look for her father. Well, then a little later in the story, you come, you can come back through there and knock on the window again, and a different little girl will answer, and will tell you that her sister went out looking for your f their father after you uh, explained about their mother, and she hasn't come home yet. So you follow the path, and the pig down in the sewers that we just killed, the guy that rampaged all over me earlier in the game, and then I came back for because I hadn't forgot my uh, my bl my life debt, that pig, when you kill it the second time, has a ribbon on it. I think it's a pink ribbon, because that's all the farther she makes it, is she goes outside down into the sewers looking for her father, and the pig kills her and eats her. So all you have left is the ribbon. So all that's left is a pink ribbon and the little girl and the smallest child who is ill and that's why she's still inside on the hunt night. Yeah, so that's that's basically the long and the short of it. Um that's why we don't talk to the to either of those girls at the window cuz it's just it's too much. <laughs> It is entirely too much of a heartbreaking story. One second, I gotta get a drink here. 
Sorry, there was a lot of talking there. So yeah, so it's too it's too much of a heart wrenching story. Okay, so Uda Oda Oedan's tomb key. Key to the gate that blocks the tomb of Oedan. Beyond the tomb, Oedan Chapel can be found in the center of the cathedral ward. Only today the church is abandoned, and some say that the residents of Oedan have gone all gone mad. Okay, so Father Gascoin was holding on to that key, which opens this gate into the new area. Now, let us see what exactly we can do here. We have... Oh, hey. We've got this. Ladder. Pretty pretty shortish ladder, all things considered, for this game. Ooh, paper that we can read. Paper that we can read, which means more story. More, more, more story. The Bergenworth Sput... Dot, 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 dot. The Bergenworth spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost masters from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. Uh, there's a Bergenworth spider. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't want to know. Blood gem workshop tool. Can I see that? God, I keep clicking the same button to try and, uh. Enables, enables fortification of weapons with blood gems. A misplaced workshop tool from the hunter's dream. The hunter who retrieves this can fortify weapons by kneading blood gems into them. Blood gems add properties to weapons when used to fortify them as blood defines an organism. Cool. So we're going to be able to upgrade our weapons. Oh yeah, I haven't read... What am I doing, guys? I haven't read these things for us yet. Saw a cleaver. One of the trick weapons of the workshop, commonly used by the in the hunting business. This saw effectively effective at drawing the blood of beasts transforms into a long cleaver that makes use of centrifugal force. The saw with its set of bloodletting teeth has become a symbol of the hunter and only grows in effectiveness the more grotesquely transformed the beast. Or we've got this one, the saw spear. Um, uh, basically the same thing. Uh, commonly used by those who dedicate themselves to the hunt. So the spear is more for people that dedicate themselves to the hunt. And it's a medium range, transforms into a medium range spear. It, um, it basically is the same except for the fact that it's, it's got flip-flop, uh, flip-flopped attribute requirements which the saw cleaver requires eight strength and seven skill. This require the spear requires seven strength and eight skill, but it also levels D with skill. <clears throat> um, the hunter blunderbuss, a blunderbuss created at the workshop of the hunter's line of work. A hunter's firearms, hunter firearms are specially crafted to employ quicksilver bullets fused with the wielder's own blood, boosting damage against beasts. The impact of this highly effective weapon counters beasts, swift movements, and the widespread of is nigh on guaranteed to hit the mark. And then the torch. A common torch formed by wrapping a pine resin drenched cloth around the end of a long stick. Hunters choose torches not only because the hunt leads them into the darkest nooks, but also because certain creatures they encounter are possessed of a deathly fear of flames. So that sounds like it'll come into play at some point. Uh, the hunter hat, one of the standard articles of hunter attire fashioned at the workshop. A fine piece of hunter attire that provides stable defense to anyone facing Yarnum's beastly threat. Recognizable in its, by its withered feathers, the cap is fashioned after one of the old hunters. Um, this is fashioned at the workshop, accompanied with a short cape to wipe away the blood. Allows one to stalk beasts unannounced by the cover of night. And then we have our just normal stuff. Black hood. Hood worn upon awakening to the nightmare of blood and beasts. Perhaps its wearer has to stay out of sight or travel to the cover of darkness. Without memory, who will ever know? 
uh, clothing worn upon awakening to the nightmare of blood and beasts. Not typically, cl not typical clothing of Yarnum. Perhaps it is uh, foreign origin. It is said after all travelers came to Yarnum from afar, without memory, who will ever know? A faint memory recalls blood ministration involving the transfusion of unknown blood. Yeah, so 